Hello everybody, Anton is here and this will be a really quick intro into uh, instance uh, tileable texturing inside 3D code. Let's go into surface sculpting straight away, tile box is a great place to start it off. And here we have it, uh, essentially this is the main object right now, main box in the middle, 1 meter by 1 meter in size. And it's got a bunch of instances that goes all around, uh, well, 8 instances around. And obviously if you do whatever you want, it gets uh, uh, transferred across, which is a really, really cool feature and can be explored to a great extent. But I want to do a brick wall right here, a uh, stone wall, so let's start doing it, right? So I'll switch to split tool, and split tool, right now I've got the split body set to zero, make it to zero because the body fold is 2.5, and let's uh, switch this to voxels and pretty low res, so, and let's split it, right? So we got the brick, and let's isolate it. So then I'm using uh, this particular alpha that comes with default and uh, with the tool, with the um, uh, move tool. And I just do this. Then I'll go and I'll split uh, for another block and I'll split for another block. And I'll do this thing all over there, right? Just plug it, creating a really uh, crappy but really fast thing you know uh, I'll next video will be more in of a time lapse where I do a really nice job but you know, this one is just showing you guys of how um, to deal with it I've just deleted that uh, plane that was there right so you would think if I split these guys they would be repeated across the whole layers because there's an instance mesh but no uh, didn't get repeated uh, the mesh was isolated and there is a bug inside 3d code that if you start to modify if you start to split those guys in the isolated mode, they won't get be they won't be instantiated. So how do we feel that? How do we fix it? We start to combine all these meshes around. All right. So we've combined them all. Obviously, that creates some connections inside those meshes, which is not cool. But you know that's a fix, and it's still a f it's a faster way to do it in the isolated mode because it's uh, not as slow. Right, so I want to isolate it again, and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna delete most of this stuff here, and I'll just duplicate this guy across because I want to make a really fast brick wall, not wasting you guys' time. You know, I want to just get you uh, understanding how this whole tool works and how to use it to a maximum, the maximum speed and the maximum time profit. Right, so I have these guys, so I want to move them a little bit around and let's do something like this and then we go and combine 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 and boom we've got it right so right now you can see obviously we have a gap uh, which I'm not sure why ha why we have this gap it, l <laughs> it looks like I just need to move this guy across to fix it and I'll just delete the bottom line here Alright, so the cool thing about it that if there is something that if you can see a feature of the pattern that gets really repetitive, uh, you can really s pick it on the whole big pattern, right? So if there is a crack that is really visible on the pattern and you do this pattern for a game, uh, like some kind of brick wall, obviously, then it'll be really easy to spot. If you only do a single square piece at the tile after you finish it, it will be kind of too late to spot the re repetition pattern. Uh, some, you know, there will be some hole there that's really visible, and that's like, oh wow, it's so visible, but you know, it wasn't that visible. There will be some crack that's uh, some particular crack that's really visible across all of them. So that's really cool that you can have this dynamic pr sculpting process all, um, all along. Which wasn't really possible before, you know, you cannot do that in ZBrush, for example, in this particular fashion. So, okay, so uh, right now, how do you export this? You can export this. Uh, the easiest way to do it is really use the export feature that's uh, called the export depth along Y, and you, c you can bake it, and then if you have, you'll get the, you know, depth, you'll get the normal map and all that, you can drop it to your uh, another application like substance or substance designer where you can add some material present on top uh, but I'll do just a test inside uh, inside Maya to see that there is to check that there are no seams present 
let's bake it right so I have it in my you can see it's all tied across uh, looks like crap texture really and but the most important thing I'm looking at uh, there are no seams right so I'm seeing uh, different directions and uh, different angles no no seams and it's great this is this is what I wanted to get and so stay tuned in the next video I'll talk about I'll do a proper timeless where I create a nice recall not this crap okay see you guys